going on. Item number 51-2017, Fort Williams Park Group use request for 2017. We have four different requests um, presented by the Fort Williams Park Committee, recommended by them for approval here. Uh, the Cape Little League, high school commencement exercises, family fun day, making strides, breast cancer awareness walk, uh, all things that have been past uses and I think are just um, before us to approve again for this year. So is there a motion to approve these recommended uses for Fort Williams Park? Sarah, is there a second? Uh, oh. oh, are you? So moved. There you go. Is there a second? I'll second that. Patty, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Great. Item number 52 2017, the uh, presentment of the Alternative Energy Committee's report. Um, Patty, I'll turn it to you to kick this off, and then I know we've got a couple of people from the committee here that will take us through a little bit of a presentation. We do. Thank you so much. Yeah. So it is with great pleasure that I introduce the Alternative Energy Committee's work this evening. Um, as you all know, earlier tonight, we as a council unanimously approved our 2017 goals. And in these goals, the council states a desire for Cape Elizabeth to be a sustainable community, specifically a community that implements policies and projects to improve the social, economic, and environmental well-being of the community. The Alternative Energy Committee report before you recommends two separate solar projects for Cape Elizabeth. It is the committee's hope that the council will consider adopting and implementing these recommendations to move our community forward, thereby taking us one step closer to achieving our written and shared sustainability goals. It was less than a year ago that the committee was given a charge. They were asked to explore opportunities to provide alternative energy to municipal and school buildings as well as town vehicles. The ultimate outcomes and recommendations in the report are well researched, based on facts, and what the committee, made up of five community members, all experts in their own right in the solar energy field, determined to be the most viable renewable energy projects for Cape Elizabeth. So before we hear a brief presentation of the Alternative Energy Committee's report, I'd like, to take, I'd like to take a moment to publicly thank the committee and our town staff liaison for lending their time, talent, and expertise to deliver a report with a clear mission. A mission with a goal of inspiring the council and the community to pursue sustainable energy projects. That is projects that engage in low risk, high reward outcomes that capture long lasting benefits from energy efficiency as well as renewable energy technology, all while proposing to significantly reduce our energy costs and carbon footprint here in Cape Elizabeth. So without further ado, I'd like to publicly acknowledge and thank the 2016 Alternative Energy Committee. Um, unfortunately, because of the weather on Monday, um, a few of the members could not be here this evening as we changed the meeting. Um, so when I do, um, I'd like to now, the, are the remaining members in the council. I was going to have you stand, but I don't think we need to at this point. This is our Alternative Energy Committee. And um, we have before us James Massey, Loren Schmidt, Richard Smith, Julia Bassett Schwerin, Wes Stone, and our staff liaison, Greg Marles, Director of Facilities and Transportation in Cape Elizabeth. So thank you, thank you. Um, we really appreciate your service to Cape Elizabeth. And you can join me to say thank you. So before we move forward with the Council's comments and questions um, and a vote to acknowledge the report, um, I cleared with you, Jamie, that we were going to have um, a brief presentation and Julia um, Schwerin is at the podium, so Julia. Hi, thank you very much for allowing us to, to speak tonight. Um, we, um, we really appreciate it. So our committee was founded um, as a, a response from the town council to our citizens. And um, as Patty mentioned, we were uh, all from different backgrounds and came together uh, to execute our mission statement, which is to facilitate the delivery of the best available decision-making information to empower you, the town council, and to inspire the community to engage in low-risk and high-reward projects that capture the immediate and long-lasting benefits of energy efficiency and renewable energy technology by significantly reducing our energy costs as well as our carbon emissions. And um, 
As part of our, our uh, plan that we executed, we had um, a lot of different uh, activities. One of those was to go out to local towns and to uh, look at the towns uh, around us uh, to see what they were doing, uh, uh, doing well and, and sometimes uh, not so well, uh, to get ideas. So there are um, some of the ideas that uh, we had from uh, our neighbors. And um, then as a, a second part of our uh, uh, job, we looked at all the major types of renewable energies, and we actually looked at some not so major types of emerging technologies um, that we could um, possibly uh, propose to the town. Uh, and then uh, another activity that we engaged in was to study the town's energy usage patterns and existing systems so that we could make a really good match between the technologies and our, our um, unique uh, town's uh, usage. Uh, we found that the town already had two arrays of solar thermal for hot water that were installed um, and are, are working very well, and you can find them on top of our uh, schools on the campus. So we decided to uh, propose solar energy as our um, uh, uh, main recommendation, and... Um, uh, we did it because um, we felt that it was the best match to the town, um, and also it, um, it's the case that, that homes and businesses in our town already are using uh, solar uh, photovoltaic uh, and sometimes solar thermal uh, in their, in their um, own energy usage patterns, and um, it's really a, a growing um, activity in our town. Um, this chart shows a typical... Uh, uh, probably summer day of um, uh, solar uh, gain from from uh, uh, both solar photovoltaic and solar thermal technology, where the the peak sun is during the middle of the day, and the blue is uh, typical homes energy demand. So uh, a lot of times uh, homes need to um, store energy either using batteries or using uh, net metering, which is a way of using the grid as a, as a big battery. But we did not uh, factor that into our recommendations because the main user of energy in our town is the schools, and the schools are mainly um, using that energy uh, during the daytime hours. So we were able to avoid any uh, of the complexities of um, uh, net metering in our recommendation. Uh, another thing to note that I think is, is uh, significant is that um, most people are able to leverage investment tax credits to reduce the costs of their um, uh, solar investments. Uh, as a municipality, we don't pay taxes, so we can't take advantage of any tax credits. Um, and there's no current state incentives for solar energy in Maine. However, there are um, a number of very well-established uh, investors who are willing to set up what's called a power purchase agreement with um, businesses, homes, and municipalities, whereby they use the tax credits and give a guaranteed electricity rate for a period of time. So they're able to um, basically uh, guarantee that our electricity rate will stay the same, usually for the first seven years. That could be continued into the future, but um, uh, there's also a very attractive buyout um, option in, in uh, the contracts that allow the entity uh, who is the host of the, uh, the technology to, um, to buy it out at a very attractive rate. Um, we also wanted to make sure, and as part of our charge, uh, to use low-risk uh, uh, recommendations. Um, so we wanted to emphasize that there's already a, a, a really established track record for solar in the state, many businesses uh, locally to install it and maintain it, uh, many of which we interviewed for our study. Um, so we, we were confident that the technology was uh, established and, and low-risk. So we recommended two projects. We'll go into these in greater detail um, in, uh, uh, in the workshop. Um, the, um, the projects that we recommended used the best numbers that were available at the time that we created them. Uh, and we are confident that they have really good economics for saving energy costs for the town. Uh, we chose a, a somewhat modest solar thermal project for the Richardson Pool that has an 11-year payback 
uh, for the energy intensive heating of pool water using a solar thermal system, coupled with a small solar photovoltaic system for operating the pumps. Um, this uh, system is highlighted in blue uh, as project number one. And um, this project, we believe, can be designed um, by the facilities department itself and paid for out of the town budget due to its low cost and attractive payback uh, characteristics. So we recommend an RFP be created for this project uh, in the near term. And the second project we recommend is also uh, in blue, uh, and, and that's a large-scale solar array to be located on town land, um, also called a greenfield. And um, we recommend uh, creating an RFP for an engineering uh, and design service that can um, work with the uh, facilities department um, due to the greater complexity and permitting required to um, roll out that system. Um, and this will cost between thirty and, and $50,000. Uh, I want to stress that these two projects are going to save significant expenditures on fuel and electricity with a short payback and low risk that allows um, very uh, many years of virtually free energy. Uh, and although these are very conservative um, payback periods that we have put in uh, our report, um, the, the actual life uh, expectancy of these systems could be uh, quite longer. So um, we've, we've formed a, a, a great team, and uh, we'd like to uh, also ask um, that we uh, are able to uh, convert from being an ad hoc committee to being a standing committee uh, and uh, to uh, shepherd these recommendations uh, uh, through the process and also to do something that we uh, also really believe in, which is to involve the schools and townspeople in uh, education on the uh, implementation of these, um, these projects. So we look forward to providing more detail in the workshops and answering all your questions, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to serve on this committee. Thank you very much. Um, I echo Patty's thanks, uh, and I sh I'm sure I speak for the entire council in thanking you all for the tremendous work that you've done. Uh, the commitment of your time and talent um, to this initiative has been greatly appreciated, so thank you very much for that. Um, very much looking forward to having a more in-depth discussion at our workshop on the, I think the 28th is when we're meeting for that. Um, so this has been a great introductory um, sort of summary, um, but really looking forward to digging in on it uh, a lot further and um, discussing uh, later on some of the recommendations that you've made. So thank you all very much again. And with that, uh, make, make, make go ahead and make a motion. Yeah. <laughs> great. I'd like to make a motion to acknowledge receipt of the report from the 2016 Alternative Energy Committee with referral to a workshop on February 28th, 2017. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Penny, any discussion? Jessica. Yes. In advance of that workshop, there were several tables that were in. Um, I, I got a paper copy in advance. And the print is so small that I can't really analyze them effectively. And so before the workshop, if there's, it's page 28 and page 29, um, and also page, well, actually, page, pages 28 through 33. If there's any way you could get those into, I think it's 11 by 15 or whatever. 11 by 17, yeah. 11 by 17 sure. in paper so that right. we can go through them. Absolutely. Deb, you and I can coordinate on that and figure that out. Super. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion? Jessica? Yep. I didn't see, as I was going through this, any reference to the really substantial 2008 Alternative Energy Committee report that the town council did. I believe you were on that committee, Sarah. And so I don't know if you reviewed that. Um, and I you know, was wondering what comparisons you would have made or maybe sure. haven't made or, you know, it was, it was a pretty big report. So I was just looking for, you know, yeah. what's different between two. They did. That was definitely the, the starting point, a jumping yeah. off place. And they spent a lot of time looking at what was done uh, what was um, accepted and why it was not um, moved along. Um, and maybe somebody else wants to speak from the committee, um, but I think that um, they looked at the energy consumption, and we really just moved ourselves quickly from that to today and, and went from that. Um, well, but there was time spent. Good. I didn't see anything in writing about no, it. No question. So if there's any way that, because that was a, that was a 
hundred plus page report, really substantial. And um, you know, I know I know you are on that committee, Sarah. So if there's any way that you can document <coughs> what you compared and what you took from that, I think that would be a critical piece because. You know, there was a great deal of work done on that, and it would be so fascinating to see how that was in 2008 and why, you know, where we are now, eight sure. years later. James Massey, perhaps you sure. should. I think there were major changes. Jim, can you come to the podium, please? I'm just speaking without a mic. <laughs> <laughs> there were major changes in both systems and costs over this period of time. Feasibility has become a reality, I think, at this time and even more so in another year. So I think this is the major difference. Some of the suggestions that were made on the earlier one were considered, but not given credence because of their adaptability to our town at this time. I think we mentioned that in the beginning of the report. Well, there was an energy analysis, but it wasn't. It didn't refer to this report. This okay. report specifically. Specific so I, I was a little confused on Fine. what you were actually referring to. So, you know, if you have a chance to do something, that I think that'd be really valuable because you know, I don't. I don't know. If you, yeah, the you may not at this point. I just yeah. The committee curious. at this point no longer yeah. exists. Mm -hmm. I mean, so to me and do and degree is it we we, we did expire. Um, so uh, certainly we can um, put that okay. to Greg Marles and um, have a conversation at workshop, and I think we can probably. Well, I'll, I'll look into it dialogue. myself as well. Okay. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. I think Sarah? that's a great idea, Jessica. I don't think it has to be a lengthy written, but yeah, just a quick touch now because as I read this, I did read it with an eye of, because I had I was the council liaison on that one, and it was really interesting to me to see what like we spent a lot a lot of time talking about geothermal, and and you guys said. Geothermal is a great thing to look at maybe in the future with new building, but it doesn't make sense now. You, you did, in other words, you, you gave nods to what the other report had said. Um, and also, we talked a lot about natural gas, and you guys basically said solar has, I got the impression solar's le left ahead of that now. So just some connections or some transitions, I think, are really helpful. Like, in my mind, they were there a little bit, but um, I had the same curiosity that you had. Just so it seems like a consistency of that we've been doing this as a town for a decade. Well, it's, I mean, it's a, it's, to me, it's a similar concept of, you know, we, we, we review a comp plan every year. We, right. had, we had a huge 100-plus page energy report in 2008. Be very nice to, to, to have written documentation of Okay, well, that this was the cost of ex, you know electricity at that point in time. Here it is. Here, these were the costs of panels. They were, here they are. Here they are today. You know, and just something. Or things we so there's some continuity of even if we talk about the workshop. Yeah. I do think that would be helpful. Yeah. I think that. All right, be we'll produce something. Yeah, we'll I think. Um, we can even just discuss it. Uh, what struck me, and I think is just an interesting editorial aside, is that there are many things, as you just alluded to, that we look at year over year, or or you know yeah. five or ten year period over ten, you know, different things that. Not a lot changes. You know, people's attitudes may change sure. about them, but yeah. there aren't a lot of the core fundamentals that change. It just struck me as how, in a relatively short amount of time, a lot has changed in this area, and that's, you know, I think very interesting, nice you know, to, to compare against. But did you did you want to make one comment or? Could you just state your name, please, for everybody? I'm Lawrence Schmidt, and I'm a member of the Alternative Energy Committee. Uh, it is. Um, probably useful to take a quick excursion and uh, to go and make a reference to the earlier um, report of an energy committee in 2008, which is, 11, um, well, close to 10 years ago now, nine years ago. And what I would like to uh, preface that with, with you is that in that time frame, the laws of thermodynamics stayed the same but everything else changed. <laughs> so uh, back then, uh, geothermal was looked at favorably, uh, and it compared economically favorable with solar at the time. Today, that is no longer the case. Further, economically, and that's the most important part, is in order to become economically feasible, you have to go and find financing concepts for these technologies. 
It's not, not, not so much just to have the technology. If you have to pay for it out of pocket, is one scenario. If you find a financing plan that uh, uh, frees you up from doing so, is another. And uh, we looked at the um, we looked at the probability of being able to realize that without incurring a burden on the budget. And so that was one of the drivers. And that led us fairly quickly to uh, a highly scalable uh, sol solar energy solution rather than other equally valuable renewable energy concepts and technologies, but maybe not for this set of circumstances. And so we, we, we can... Um, let me use an analogy when you say we should make a comparison and make reference to that. When you buy a car today and you look at the engine and you look at the same combustion engine, but you look at it 10 years ago, you will find that there's not a lot of things in common other than the principle, right? And going back and making reference and is that better or was this better, it's just not relevant. Right? And uh, a lot of that is true in, uh, in uh, the solar, uh, in the, particularly in the solar energy field, but also in renewable energy, that um, the set of circumstances that existed nine years ago was a very different one from the one we find today. And, uh, and uh, given that, it may say sometimes not be a productive use of time to focus too much of what has been, right, rather than uh, what is now and what will be in the future. That, that is uh, our opinion that it matters most to look forward and to find a technology that has shelf life, if you will and not, not so much uh, um, do a comparison to history, which does not say in, in any way that the work that was done then was not highly competent and highly relevant for the time it was performed in. So I hope you, you, you don't uh, construe my words here as uh, uh, denigrating that earlier work as it's not really relevant. It, it, things have changed. That, that is the reason for that. Thank you. Any other comments or discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of uh, acknowledging receipt of this report and moving on to our workshop on February 28th. Great. Thank you very much.